So my name is Sharon Palmer. I'm the executive director of the Berry Food Bank. I've recently made the decision to retire. A uh, very difficult decision for me, but uh, really about personal choices in my life. Um, I've loved this job. It's been the best job I've ever had. Um, so rewarding in so many ways. Um, but I'm kind of at that point in life where um, I'm getting close to retirement age and I uh, really want to do some of the other things I enjoy in life. I'm a very active person and enjoy hiking and skiing and uh, outdoor activities and um, I really value the opportunity to do some of those things at this stage. I know many people don't get the opportunity to have a retirement phase in their life. Um, I know that from my very own personal family life that uh, many of them didn't make it out of their 60s and so for me it's, uh, it's important to just take a little time at this stage in my life and, and uh, have an opportunity to do some of those things. So I joined as the executive director in March 2021. At that time we were still in COVID uh, and so it was a very different world and um, I walked into this organization and right from the very beginning I knew this was a very special place. You know, you come in in the morning and uh, the volunteers are already here and they're hard at work. And that was the first big surprise. I mean, just how many people show up every day for their shift um, and just get to work. They see what needs to be done and they do it. And so that was the, one of my very first impressions is just the dedication of the volunteers. Um, and that sort of set the tone for just the, the service and the support uh, from the community in terms of making this place work. And um, from there, it's just been um, a very eye-opening experience in many ways. Um, it's eye-opening from the perspective of the need in the community. So, uh, you know, we have uh, seen tremendous growth in the number of people coming to us in those in the last three and a half years. Um, and you really start to see uh, the, the types of challenges that people have in the various different situations. I and mean, you can kind of imagine it, but when you meet the people and you talk to them, it really leaves uh, an impression on you and really sort of speaks to your soul in terms of um, you know how it would be to walk in somebody else's shoes and and experience what they're experiencing and so that is also you know one of my my most memorable thoughts about the food bank is just what the need is out there and then I think the other thing that really strikes you uh, when you come here is just the generosity of the community so we, we do get great support from the community um, donors from all walks of life you know uh, some who can give you know five dollars and they still come and they they give you five dollars because that's what they can contribute and, and and then you have donors that can give you a hundred thousand dollars and um, so it's just amazing to see the range of support that we get businesses that do food drives for us or raise money for us and um, I really think that that is part of what makes this community so special is just to see what what that dynamic is between giving and the people who have the need and the people who just realize what other people need in the community and, and they step up and do it. So I think it, you know some of the things I'm most proud of are the movement to the the self shop model. Um, it was a big change for us, a big change organizationally, volunteers, new roles, new uh, responsibilities for the volunteers. Uh, but it gave dign more dignity to the experience of receiving food from the food bank, reduced waste, and um, universally the volunteers accepted it, the, the clients loved it. Um, and it just makes so much sense to, to organize that way. So that was a, uh, something I'm very proud of to see that we were able to bring that into the food bank. Um, the other things I think that I, uh, are highlights for me are the school fuel program. So we're now doing uh, 22 schools where we, uh, we have a snack program with the schools uh, that we bring snacks, healthy snacks into the schools. Um, I think that's a wonderful thing as well. We know that you know you need nutrition to learn well, and so helping kids at school um, is really important. So I'm proud of that program. And then the last thing I'd mention is the national standards. Uh, we achieved this. Food Banks Canada has a standards program that they call um, Standards of Excellence. We achieved that this spring, and it was a massive undertaking. So with the board, with the staff, uh, we looked at every single policy and procedure that we had, some that we didn't have that we needed to have, and 
We built those from the ground up and, and uh, implemented a lot of change. And um, that has been one of those things where um, made us a better organization in so many ways. So it kind of sets out a playbook. So for the next person that steps into this role, there's policies and procedures that have been developed very recently, um, thinking about best practices in food banks across Canada um, that they can look at and refer to and, and keep on track with. And so I feel that that really helped this whole organization become more resilient, more professional, um, and it was a great learning experience for the whole organization. So, so I think the big thing is don't take anything for granted. You know, um, and that kind of crosses so many lines. You know, if you think about a client and you might look at the person and think, oh, well, they're, they still have a nice car. Or, you know, what's, why do they need the food bank? But you don't know their story. You don't know what's happening in their life. You don't know if they're living in that car with their three kids. Um, so there's a lot you don't know. And so you shouldn't take anything for granted unless you really have that answer. Um, from the perspective of the donors, um, again, this is, you can't take anything for granted. Um, situations change all the time. It's a constant, um, constant flux of things coming and going and, and some organizations might be able to support you this year but not next. And so, again, you can't take anything for granted. And then the staff and volunteers, you know, like these are the people that make the whole thing work. And um, so that, I think, you know, the volunteer, 215 volunteers we have right now, and they're giving their time uh, to us to make this whole thing happen. So again, it's precious, right? It's, it's special, it's precious, and, and you, you just can't take it for granted. So I think the, you know, it's constant evolution. Um, different challenges will come up, uh, and I think that it's constantly thinking about what's happening in the community. Um, how do we work as a team with other uh, organizations to support the needs in the community? We do do a lot of partnering with other organizations right now, but I think that that can grow. I think that within the food bank network, there's opportunities to be more efficient, to do more bulk purchasing together, um, and to look at how we can support each other um, in more ways, especially the smaller ones. We have many great resources here. We do act as a hub for small uh, food banks where we can bring things in by the truckload and then distribute out, that can grow. Uh, so I think there's lots of opportunities and lots of change that will still come. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm really appreciative of this opportunity. Uh, the board of directors have been amazingly supporting um, the staff, the volunteers, and the community. You know, I just, I thank them all. I thank every one of them for what the role they played in my journey. So it was definitely a hard decision, um, but I think I will be back as a volunteer at this organization or some other one because it's just so rewarding to, to be part of something like this. And I want to thank the community. I want to thank the donors, all the wonderful people I've met, the volunteers, the staff. Um, it's, been, it's been a wonderful experience.